Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to Great Day, Connecticut. Happy Monday. I'm Kara Sundlet. Monday, Monday, can't trust that day. Ugh, it's a soggy one out there. Yeah, yeah. Soggy it, cereal. Well, yes, um, and because we're going to be talking about cereal. Yeah, we'll, we'll um, talk about cereal, that in just a minute. But. Because there's a... there's. Do you know Kellogg's is getting out of the cereal business? What is America coming to? Kellogg's is getting out of the cereal business? Yeah. I didn't know that. They're going to spin it off. They're going to spin it off? Yeah, we'll talk about that. But first, right. it's uh, National Cheeseburger Day. Yeah, and they got a lot of deals here in Connecticut and throughout <laughs> the land. September 18th is, of course, National Cheeseburger Day, Kara. According to the National Day calendar, this cheesy, greasy goodness dates back to the 1920s. I know. Isn't that amazing? I actually thought it would have been older. Like, it took them until 1926, I guess, the Humpty Dumpty drive-in <laughs> in Denver was the first to trademark it. But before that, I mean, did people not put cheese on a burger? I don't know. <laughs> the Humpty Dumpty drive-in. I know at Louis down in New Haven, if you ask for a condiment, you're asked. You're, yeah, yeah, you can't do that. That's you're, like that's you're showing the door. Steamed and, and they, you're their way or the highway. That's it. It's pretty incredible. All, all right, right, so there are specials. There are McDonald's okay. and Wendy's and Burger King are all having specials. You can check it out online. You have to be members for awards. Get, for, so get uh, the McDonald's app. McDonald's and get the app. Get the app, Burger get the King. free cheeseburger to leave. You need the app for Wendy's. I'm not quite sure, but you can check it out. Oh. You do? You need the app for Wendy's, get, too? That's how and you it's a penny. A penny with any purchase? That's how you become a rewards member. You just get the app. Just get the app. And then, then all of a sudden, what do you do? Up. You show it to them? or what Yeah, you, you sign up. And then, like, yeah. yeah. Right, very good. You I know I have that for Starbucks, but I don't have it. They're giving you a free burger for your email, essentially. Nah, it's not worth it. <laughs> all right. All right. So, if you thought ordering pineapple on your pizza was divisive, how about pickle pizza? <laughs> yeah. All right, so it's got 16 million views on TikTok. DiGiorno thought it would be a good idea to bring that creation to life. I do know that all the youngins are eating lots of pickles because TikTok made pickles cool. I, I would prefer a pickle rather than pineapple. Yeah, I could see that because at least it's like savory and salty. Yeah, you're looking at a pineapple slash pickle pizza. Yeah, oh, wait, is, yeah, there's pineapple on yeah, one side and pineapple pickle on, on the other. Side. That is just wrong. And they're going to give you a free one. All you have to do is go online. You can pay me to eat it. <laughs> you, 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 exactly. <laughs> um, so uh, you're going to get pickles and you're going to get pineapples and you're going to get it for free, but you have to go online. Now, they are, it's actually hard to get. There's one per person and, and DiGiornoPizza.com and like they're going to sell out, apparently. Yeah, DiGiorno will give people the chance are to Are they going to actually eat them? I don't know. I, guess, I, don't know. I guess people just want to make a TikTok trying shop to eat it. To dot good, shop to Giorno goodness dot com. Okay. There you go. Now we're going to talk about the cereal. All right, let's talk about All right, the cereal. Once upon a time. This is Kara Sunlin on the box, yes. just in case you're wondering. Yes, once upon a time, I used to work in Battle Creek, Michigan, where cereal was invented. Yeah. And uh, now they're saying cereal is a decline. There I am. There's the cornflake saying. There's fun facts about this. A cornflake is born from um, acres of sweet, delicious corn. Flavors are mixed a secret way, and they're cooked with corn. Tons when, when, each day. When, when did you get such box? So this is about 25 years old. <laughs> 25 years old. Are there cornflakes in there? Oh, yeah. Oh, boy. <laughs> It's oh, never boy. been opened. But so when you're a reporter in Cereal City and you cover Kellogg's, they allow you to go to Cereal City. Actually, anyone can do this. And you go through the whole thing learning about cereal, and then you get your face on a cornflake spot. That's pretty cool. Because you know why? Tony the Tiger says... It's great. They're great. For They're Frosted Flakes. great. But here's the thing: because over the past decade, we're now eating more protein for breakfast. Carbs have fallen out of favor. Oh. Cereal is declining. Kellogg's is going to spin off its North American cereal division into a brand new company. Oh, so they're still going to own it? I it guess they're going to. Yeah, they're going to own. It. I shouldn't say they're. I, I, I guess they're. But they're getting. They're just moving I'm into some, some separate some, thing. What's the next thing that happens? They shut it down. I mean, at I don't all know. This, Kara. You can smell it in the air too when you're there. Right? Yeah. Yes, yeah. yes. Every morning I would drive to work and the whole place I thought smelled like Frosted Flakes. It's just a wonderful smell. <laughs> <laughs> All right, now I've seen these puzzles at um, in Middletown at Amato's. Tens of Ten thousands of puzzle pieces. Yeah. It's a 40,000-piece puzzle all assembled into one massive display. A woman in this. Texas did this. She did it. It took her years. It's Disney, right? Look so at this. How do you have room Disney in your house puzzle. for this? More than 40,000 pieces, more than 20 feet long, and 6 feet wide. Could you imagine? Wow. Could you imagine forty? Th imagine starting that with all the pieces and all the puzzles. Uh, I, I would drive me like the idea of like when am I ever finishing? When this? am I ever going to finish this? Is right. So, so she what is said, she going to do with the enormous puzzle? She's going to take them into individual. She's going to break them apart into individual pieces, and yeah. then she's going to frame them. 
she's going to frame, especially the Beauty and the Beast one. She said, that's, her that's her favorite one. But look at this, Kara. Could you imagine? And share there it the is. rest with other You can get Disney that fans. at Amato's Toy and Hobby. Wow. So you have to be town. really, you know, that's persistence. That's persistence. That's dedication when you finish a 40,000. get that for my mother for Christmas. It'll drive her up a wall. <laughs> <laughs> Why don't you do that? <laughs> that would be fun, right? I don't think you have to take up the whole room. Take up my mother's whole house. Oh, my gosh. Drew, Mar Drew Barrymore now apologizing because she went back to work with her show after the strike and deciding to resume production on her show on Friday. She shared a pretty emotional video, but she was explaining her decision about starting production, even though the Writers Guild of America is on a bitter strike. And it's drawn a lot of pro protest to her show. She claims that it's not a decision only about her, even though her name is on the show. But I don't know. What if you said, I'm Just, not going to work? Uh, you you got to say, you know, you got to stick with the strikers. That's what you got to do and follow everybody else. I mean, else. granted, the, the network may be able, the one to produce her show. But if she doesn't come, then there's probably not a Drew Barrymore talk show. Right. She said she was going to use non-union writers. Right. Which but means that's those scams. are people who are, yeah, yeah they're crossing the picket that's, line. That's not good. So you can't do that. I mean, I she can was, understand sorry, if she went she and did it and said, I'm just going to do this whole thing live without any script. Right. That's allowed. She was That's trying to get her 150 people back to work, but it backfired. You can't do that. So that's just something else. Okay. All right. If you're looking for something new to stream, actor Sean Penn, I saw this over the weekend, has a brand new movie out. I didn't see the movie, but I saw him interviewed. I think yeah. it was on CBS this morning. It's not a Hollywood set. Superpower takes place on the front lines of the war in Ukraine. Yeah. But that actually wasn't even the original plan for the film. Take a look. This was the living room, that was the bathroom. Thousands of miles from the comforts of Hollywood, actor Sean Penn takes us to the front lines of Ukraine in his new film, Superpower, and reveals a part of himself audiences don't usually see. When you first went to Ukraine, this is not the film that you originally set out to make. Not at all. Penn originally planned to make a lighthearted profile of Volodymyr Zelensky, the comedic actor turned president. But as they were filming in Ukraine, Russia launched its brutal invasion. People want to forget what's going on in the East. Believe me, and now they destroyed everything on the East. Over seven visits to Ukraine, Penn forged a deeply personal relationship with President Zelensky. I have tremendous affection and an enormous uh, uh, respect for him and for what he represents of all Ukrainians. You even went to the front lines at one point, 150 meters away from the Russian advance. Why did you feel it was important to get that up close? I think that, the, that if there's a value that, that, I, that I can bring to something and that we, in the making of this film, can bring to something, you want to give the context. Can I be very blunt? You're Sean Penn. Nobody's going to be responsible for you dying on the front line. Penn hopes the film shows Americans how desperately Ukraine needs military support. The war they're fighting is led by freedom, but it can't be fought, in this case, sadly, without weapons, and we should be giving them everything they need yesterday. If we committed the way that you're talking about, do you think this war could have already been won? No question about it. And he hopes Ukraine's determination serves as a model for the rest of the world. Where you have unity, you have courage, you have power, you have principle, you have pride. Can we as Americans learn from the Ukrainian people? I think if we don't, we're over. Michael George, CBS News, New York. Yeah, he was saying his celebrity status gives him access to places that other people wouldn't know, and he was using that celebrity status to bring this attention to the war. Wow. Yeah, I Incredible. definitely want to see it. And it's out now. You can stream it, actually, on Paramount+. Plus. So it's already hmm. on your TV. All right. Are you dreaming of a vacation? How about a fall Great Day Connecticut giveaway? Yes, with, with Great Day Connecticut and Eyewitness News, we have partnered with Avello Airlines for our Great Day Fall Getaway. You can win four tickets anywhere Avello Airlines flies. Today's keyword is what, Kara? Harvest. Ooh, enter to win on WFSB.com. We're going to announce this week's first qualifier coming up on Eyewitness News at 4. Yes, and again, that keyword is harvest, so go right now, enter it at WFSB.com, and then stay tuned at 4 to watch to see if you are qualified cool. to win. Cool. Yeah.